Okay, October 26th here on a Friday. I'm in Bellflower, California in a Panda Express here. I'm here with Paul, the lead singer of Cabin. And uh, just Kevin. wants... Kevin! Oh. <laughs> God, I'll, I just... It's been that kind of day and everything. So, but, uh, not one person... Not one person wants to go to get to it right anyway. And I'm cool. I said, oh, what if you want to call it Cavan or Cavan or whatever it is? Well, see, cool that's the other me. thing, how you have it written. It's K-A and then the capital B, so I'm not sure if it's Cavan yeah. or... See, the story behind that is um, from the band. I was, like, the band previously called Jekyll, what I was explaining to you when we changed the name to uh, Caven. When we were Jekyll, the logo... Was a little uh, was a little head with horns that kind of went out like this. Yeah. And some arguments later, as regards to me wanting to keep the, the logo, but the boys like, oh come on, let's do something totally different. Well, okay, and I said, well, let's incorporate it for the people that still know us as Jekyll, um, because just five I have, I have friends back home will have that that logo tattooed on their arms. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just like suddenly like so for me it's not like it's a big thing to change the name. Because these are friends and fans of mine back home who have this thing tattooed on her. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it might be easy for you to say, yeah, let's just change the name. For me, I have a respect for those people. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're, uh, they followed me through the years and they, they gave me the the, um, the inspiration to fucking pack up and leave. You know what I mean? To, to follow fucking my footpath. Um, um, so yeah. But anyway, long story short, is. Um, the horns kind of went out with that. And that's why I incorporated the horns into that V. Ah. So um, I'll send you the images and stuff like that. You'll see the. You'll see the. Okay. So yeah. So as respect to um, my friends and uh, people who followed us as Jekyll, and for the people who got tattoos and all that kind of stuff, and um, it was a out of respect for them to kind of bring it into cave and. Uh, I'll keep it there. Okay. That's what it was, makes sense. Yeah. Actually, kind of, kind of nice and yeah. everything like that. So, so that was why. That's why it kind of has the big V there. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty funny because we've talked a lot before this interview and stuff. <laughs> so it's it's gonna You're be. Going, Damn. Yeah, I should have had the recorder going on a long time ago. We've just been sitting here just yakking away. A lot of good stuff was missed. So I'm hoping we can catch it again. But uh, oh, real quick, um, so. From us talking, also a lot has changed too. So when you first actually came here, a lot of the members changed. I mean, you're saying we've gone through, uh, yeah. Um, I said when a week before we flew out here, we lost our rhythm guitar player. He wasn't feeling it. I could go into a whole song, sorry about that, but uh, it is what it is. So when we landed, we were looking for a rhythm guitar player. We went through. I think Billy, who is still the guitar player to this day, for Caden. Um, I think he was, he might have been the only guitar player we auditioned. Um, he was so good, we were like Nazis to him, man. Freaking, we had him, we had him rehearsing uh, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve. Because we landed over here in December of 2008, I think. Mm -hmm. And around the 16th or 14th or something like that, close to my birthday. And uh, yeah, we put that guy through his paces. And he was just like, these guys, these Irish guys are like Nazis, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> He was telling his friends all this, and uh, but we're, we're just hungry, you know what I mean? We're just, yeah. We we were we were scared because we weren't a full piece band from the two or three years that we were back in Ireland, mm -hmm. and uh, to suddenly land in LA, not knowing a single person. Our whole plan of getting here, staying here for six months, and playing our asses off for six months, because that's all we were planning to be here for was six months, maybe a year, depending on how finances our finances held up. And uh, yeah, Billy. Billy was on board. Um, he had to ask us. I think a month later. I think it was a month, six weeks later, after a couple of shows that we played, or whatever else. He was like, "So, what's the story, guys? Are we? In the, are no? I think we asked him because his, his girlfriend at the time, uh, a girlfriend now, his wife now, yeah. uh, Delia, asked him. So, so, what's the story? Are you are you in this band or not? And B Billy was like, two months later, uh, I actually don't know. They never asked me." <laughs> We put, we, we, yeah, we're, uh, I'm kind of like, I need to know this guy's in it, you know what I mean? He's yeah. in it. And uh, so Billy kind of asked us, what's the story of rehearsals one day? Am I in this band or not? He says, oh yeah, we, we mean to ask you. He says, yeah, yeah, are you game on? And he's like, oh, I kind of thought I was, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of a running trend when we take on new members. Uh -huh. um, uh, yeah. 
we don't say nothing until we kind of feel them out and see where they stand because we don't want anybody getting too cozy. Yeah. Uh, too soon. We want, we want to make sure that they're hungry for it and everything else. And having saying that, like I've still lost lost the league tower player, lost drummers along the way and it's been a totally different band. I, I have no more. I'm the only Irish man left. Uh, it's four other Americans, Thomas on lead guitar, Billy, my right hand man, and rhythm. Uh, Jordan on drums, he's only been in it the last, I think, eight months, and Rudy as well in the last couple of months on bass. So. Okay, so the band that I saw this last Sunday, basically you've been this t- together for eight months, in a sense. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure the exact time or yeah. the rest, but yeah, it's relatively new. Rudy's only been on board since. Um, I'll tell you, you know, Rudy's been on board since I think um, February, March, or something like that. Hmm. So about that, yeah. yeah. Uh, growing up and everything, getting yourself into music, what was what was some of the music that you were listening to that kind of brought you about to where you're at right now? Uh, my generation was coming up with the likes of Bon Jovi, Brian Adams, that kind of soft rock stuff. Really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I heard Runaway from Ron bon Jovi. Yeah, that's Slippery When Wet. Still one of my favorite albums of the uh, New Jersey. Just, uh-huh. I love that kind of stuff. I love the, the melodies and everything. Richie Sambora, badass singer, badass fucking guitar player. Like, I always thought he was a better singer than Bon Jovi. It was just like, guys, <laughs> insane. Um, but I remember the generation ahead of me, my, my sister, my, my sister's um, kind of friends and the guys she, she was dating and everything else. They were all into the harder look, and I, I was kind of, I was very naive and a stupid kid at that stage, but um, they were listening to the likes of Maiden, Metallica, Megadeth, and everything yeah. else, and I was always a little bit too heavy for me, but when I think I came across a cassette tape that my sister had in her room, and it was just, I think it was a black cover, cover, and I just seen some, I think it was white or silver writing on it, and it said Cinderella. I was like, who's this, you know? And he says, I haven't listened to it. And I was like, yeah, you know what I mean? So I was kind of, I had listened to Cinderella. And I was like, okay, I'll open my horizons, you know what I mean? And uh-huh. see what's out there. Um, and a guy introduced me to uh, Iron Maiden's uh, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. Mm-hmm. And once I heard that, and then he gave me uh, Somewhere in Time, which I immediately fell in love with. I was just like, ah. And from there, everything stopped. <laughs> I started going backwards in like music ways. Okay. Um, I never researched into it because I think shortly after I started going into the grunge and all that kind of yeah. stuff and everything else proud of that. But lucky enough for me, everything came to a standstill. Otherwise, I didn't listen to Nirvana and all that kind of stuff. And everything. I thought, these are cool and uh, I was into it. But definitely where my heart my heart was burning was for that kind of that hard rock metal sound when I heard Maiden I was just like damn who do I get and I started listening to like Crimson Glory all that kind of stuff UFO and uh, Samson because I heard like Dickinson and everything so I kind of went back into there I was trying to find out what I could you know Never, I was never a Megadeth fan loved the music I never liked uh, Mustaine's kind of vocals okay <laughs> uh, Metallica Really cool. I like the obviously the earlier stuff. I know people kind of lag on uh, the album Black, but I think it's a stroke of genius. I think it's 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 exactly what I'd like to do. It's 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 heavy. It stays true to the heaviness, but it's it's that fine line where it's so marketable and radio friendly. Yeah. And I think that's where Caven comes from, man. That's that's why I've always kept the songs around to three and a half, four and a half minutes, and um, because I want that radio kind of mm-hmm. thing, and then. Uh, I still want to keep it heavy, you know. Um, I'm just trying to get that fine line, you know. But uh, yeah, that's where I, I, I just, from Maiden, I kind of went backwards. I started listening to that kind of stuff, and I'm still, I'm still learning so much. I talked to, I talked to all these music heads and everything. Else, and I talk about bands, and I'm like, I have no idea who that is. Yeah. Uh, they're all, and I just, I love learning. I love listening to it. It's just, it's still, even though it's all the past and it's, it's so long ago, and it's just, it's, 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 it's still. Great to me to hear it all. Like uh, yeah. White Snake was a big influence for me. You know? Very I love cool. uh, Coverdale. Absolutely, really, really cool. From like, there was Deep Purple. You know, mm-hmm. um, I never got into Pink Floyd or anything. I never went that far back. Um, I came across all the Ozzy and Black Sabbath and everything else. Obviously, when going back into that kind of time, and uh, I was never a big Ozzy vocal fan either. Loved the music again, the guitars. Just Iommi, amazing. You know what I yeah. mean? Insane. And, uh, just anything that had a melody 
I mean, it's hooky and heavy, not extremely heavy, but just heavy. There's something that struck a chord with me as well, you know what I mean? Um, and as the guy was walking, this, obviously the priest. Oh, I can't Alfred. The priest. Alfred is just, okay, he's, he's pretty amazing. He, he definitely, he didn't even have to earn Metal God title, like he, he deserved it, you know, he still deserves it. It's just, yeah. that guy, he's, what, he's 60 now, and he's still, it's just, he's a, a machine, like, as a vocalist. I, I don't ever want to be able to sing like that, because I just, I, I still pay homage to it every every day, you know what I mean? It's just like, wow. <laughs> and it's always, it's always nice to be at that level, I just, to be able to look up at something and go, whoa. Yeah, because you need you need to be able to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Obviously, always. I mean, there's always, as I said, I was talking earlier. There's always going to be better singers, better guitar players, better drummers. And um, but it's it's the it's the idea and like just being able to whatever inspired you as a kid. You know what I mean? Just be able to look at something and go, damn, that's so good. <laughs> yeah, that's true though. That's true. <laughs> now, when you got started in music, was singing something you found yourself, or did you? actually start playing an instrument before that? Huh. Uh, um, the first time I kind of came across a singing and acoustic was a, a friend of mine. He was a new, uh, one of the kind of a new friendship that I took up with. Still a friend to this day. Um, Dave, a friend of us. Um, this is Dan. Um, started playing acoustic guitar and singing and everything. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I sucked. Didn't know any instrument. I never knew how to sing. Like anybody around like 13, 14 years of age, you're a kid and you think you, you, you're like, yeah, you are Brian Adams and you're singing the best hits or Green Days, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so in the process of um, trying to find a guitar so I could do a duo with my friend, you know what I mean, and play acoustic, um, I came across, it's something similar to your Craigslist um, back home in Ireland, it's called a Buy and Sell. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen a, a guitar for sale. So I met this guy called Colin, who was actually rehearsing with his band, same age as myself, turned up same age, yeah, same age, and he was selling an acoustic guitar, and he said, damn, I just messed up about five minutes of an interview, it was actually an amp I was looking for, I bought the acoustic, I was looking for an amp to play it through, oh. and he was selling an amp, uh -huh. and Colin Kelly is his name, and he was rehearsing with a band called Loom, L-U-M-E, mm -hmm. And I, I, I uh, bought the amp off and whatever else, totally overcharged me. But again, just being naive and stupid. Didn't, I was totally newbie when it came to all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I was way behind in the times when it came to this kind of stuff. Ever. And uh, it was just by chance that he was like, oh, do you, do you know how to play anything, whatever else? And the one song that I knew how to play an acoustic badly was um, Soul Asylum, Runaway Train. Yes. I don't know if you know yeah. Yes, I know the song. <laughs> yeah. I had their album, I thought it was like Black Gold, I think it was called. No, I think that was the second album. I actually had that CD, I think. Yeah, I have two of the CDs. One called Black Gold, I think it was. And I think the one with Runaway Train. Uh huh. So on it. And, um, so yeah, why don't you jump up in front of the mic, play the acoustic and sing it, you know? And the band joined in. And, uh, yeah, so I sang the song or whatever else, and the band joined in. I was like, fucking hell, nervous as hell, obviously. Didn't know what the hell I was doing. Uh -huh. And uh, first time I ever played through a microphone or speakers or with a band. Like, never met a drummer in my life or a lead guitar player or a bass player, you know. And, uh, and um, yeah, so I was walking out. They're like, oh, that was cool, yeah, yeah, very good. And they're playing all the usual covers like uh, Green Day and Metallica and all every yeah. average band plays, you know. I got a phone call half an hour later saying, hey, would you want to join the band, you know what I mean, as a singer, because we don't have a singer. And because uh, Colin today saw me up, he was singing. He was he was a guitar player and singing at the same time, but they said they wanted a singer. And I was like, uh, sure, yeah, let's do it, you know what I mean, I can help. So I went back, learned, listened to all the songs and whatever else, started rehearsing. Two weeks later, they would call me up and um, say, oh yeah, we got our first gig. And it was in a bar, I think we were, I don't know what age, we were, we were definitely way on the age to be playing in the bar, you know? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, two weeks, I had two weeks to uh, get my act together and play my first show. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, I even can't remember your question at that stage. Oh, what got I mean to the yeah. That's that's where I got the bug. I remember my first show was in a local bar called Anderson's. Anderson. And, uh, my local town, my hometown, uh, I remember doing the sound check. Um, um, for the sound check, totally blanked out. Totally blanked out. Yeah. I think 
I can't remember what song I was doing. It was either it was either Sweet Child of Mine or one of those, and uh, could not remember the lyrics. Totally blank. I just stood there looking at everybody and ah, shitting myself. I was just like, <laughs> Damn. and it was obviously evident because I know a, a, a guy who went to school with me who was a badass musician. Uh, so he was like, like, like man, come on stage time, you can just just breathe, relax, and get into it, you know. And I got over the first song, the second song, and then after that it was just like, you know, turning back, went for it, you know. Nice. Never turned back after that. And start doing all the ACDC stuff and the Metallica stuff, the Guns N' Roses. We never actually did Maiden. We never actually sang any Maiden. But as a vocalist, I, I, I was never the greatest of vocalists. Never have been. You know? um, it's just been a work in progress. <laughs> um, I was always able to emulate stuff very, very good. Um, I was always able to emulate ACDC really well, but it wasn't my natural voice. Mm-hmm. So I was always the next day like, oh, yes, really <laughs> hard. Um, I was able to do Axel really well. Never actually tried Maiden, but I think that was just, it was out of my league, you know what I mean? And I think the more as said it went hand in hand, we going backwards and listening to all the kind of the bands and everything, I started start to learn more. And, Listening to the likes of like Bon Jovi as well, but Coverdale and Priest and Maiden and Dickinson and all those kind of was like damn. And I started to find my own voice to a degree. I was still kind of emulating a lot of those or whatever else. And it's only been as years went on. I was just like had to find comfort in my own skin with my own voice. So yeah, I'm nowhere near like a an amazing singer. It's, it's nice to get compliments and all that kind of stuff about about but it's, it's something I've worked at for the last 15 years as regards to doing what I do and doing what I love to do. I'm not trying to be the next Halford, I'm not trying to be the next Coverdale. I just, I, I, I'd love their tone, I'd love their, I'd love their uh, pitch, you know what I mean? I'd be like, oh, ah, yeah, cool. <laughs> I wouldn't snuff it, you know? Uh-huh. But, um, yeah, that's, that's the word I can't Yeah, well, I mean, if you ask me, I would have to beg to differ. I think you can stand in that league <laughs> by all means, I swear. <laughs> I mean, I like I said, I've covered a lot and everything like that, and like I said, you guys really awed me. I mean, just you're, you're, everybody work well as a team, it seemed like, up there, but your stage presence, you you pretty much own the stage, in my opinion. I mean, you, got the, you kept the crowd enthused and everything, and just, I mean, you hit every... I mean, you, you, your voice carried from low to just amazing <laughs> heights. It's just amazing. Like I said, I was just amazed on how how high you took it and how, how hard you brought it and everything like that. And I know musicians are their worst critics. Uh. And you guys, you guys really pound yourselves going, I really had a bad show or I missed mm-hmm. this. I hear that a lot and everything like that. But if you, coming from where I was standing and everything like that, you guys pulled it off really good sure, and everything and if that was if you had difficulties and you think <laughs> I want to see one of your better shows then because that was pretty amazing I have to cool. say and everything sure. but um, I mean since you got since you've been here and everything like that and you know ins and outs with players and stuff where are some of the places that you've played at have you just kind of been just in the Los Angeles Orange County area here or have you been able to get out on other places um, yeah we started when well, we started I used to live in the valley um, so we hit the Hollywood scene, that was obviously, because we were newbies, we mm-hmm. didn't know anybody here, had no, no uh, sinner. So um, we were playing 16, 17 shows a month, Ooh. and when we first came over here, we just started booking and playing shows, and mainly Hollywood, and the surrounding areas like uh, Covina and stuff like that, or wherever, wherever we could, you know, uh, Pasadena. Um, we, uh, so much so in Hollywood, like we became the... Uh, house band for the whiskey as well nice. for a year in 2009 wow they were impressed with us so much that um, we, I think we were making waves it was just like where the hell did these fuckers come from you know yeah <laughs> well, I mean that's a historic place right there yeah and uh, I think I think uh, a lot of the bands on this on the strip at that time couldn't ignore us they, they were too comfortable they're great musicians but very snobby in their own right as well because they, they felt like they owned the Sunset Strip, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? They, they were the, the LA guns and the, the the poison and all that kind of stuff of, of the now, you know? Yeah. And suddenly this hard rock metal band from Ireland who didn't dress like anybody else, didn't sound like uh, Sunset, you know what I mean? Um, certainly didn't act like Sunset, like boyos. Suddenly came out of the scene 
and hit it hard and it was just like uh, um, so we made a name for ourselves that, that kind of way very quickly and then we started branching out into Corona um, and eventually we started going into we did we toured Texas Arizona uh, New Mexico and stuff like mm, that so nice yeah, so we got around. not as much as we wanted because of, of the lineup changes it's given us a lot of downtime so we haven't been able to do as much as we want to you know? Yeah, I can, I can see that, man, especially when you lose a member because you got to get the new one back, you know, on track with you guys. So, that, yeah, yeah, it's going to delay things. It takes, it takes a lot of time to get back up and running to, to where you want to be as that, like a, a proper working machine and in order to go out there and do what you want to do. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. So, but, uh, so in the, uh, on a downtime, that's what I was saying with um, our clothing sponsor, Rock and Roll Gangstar. Um, so on my downtime, I'd hit the road with him and we'd hit Uproar. Um, he'd be a sponsor for a lot of those um, uh, uproar festivals or the, the the mayhem festivals and stuff mm, like that. Nice. So I got to mingle with a lot of um, influential people behind the stage and stuff like that, and, and just simply meet and shake hands with people within the booth, the, the rock and roll band star booth, and introduce them to Caven. And uh, I've learned to, I, so even on the downtime, I was still trying to like draw people in without playing because it's possible to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, I'm a firm believer it's work. Internet is like the new age word of mouth, but I still prefer to go back to word of mouth. Yeah. yeah. And like, it's funny because we even talked about that, and that's actually one of the questions I always try to bring up with people. Like, because the music, since when I've been around, of course, uh, it, it's changed so much. We don't have our record stores no more, you know. Uh, everything changes. It's been from cassette to, you know, to vinyl, and now we're at CDs, but now it's MP3s. I mean, because we don't really have a lot of those branches. Granted, we have the internet, but still, I mean, you still got to get people drawn. I mean, how are you as a band, or trying to do, to get you guys heard? What do you, you know, some of the things that you're trying to do? Put on the best shows that we can. That's, uh, I mean, that's first and foremost. Uh, I think live is where we're, where we're most comfortable. Um, we're in the process of doing a new CD or whatever else, but um, just to introduce people to some of the new music and stuff. But yeah, I think just we want to get back to playing as many shows as possible because I think that's where bands are uh, won and lost, the battles are won and lost. Um, and that's, that's, that's where it's always been. It's always been word of mouth to this day. Internet was just it was a lazy man's, a lazy man's or a lazy musician's way of of marketing themselves. It's yeah. a great tool. Use it as a tool. Use it to your advantage. But any band work, uh, who are trying to make it, and when I say make it, make a living. I'm not talking about superstardom, but you look, if you look at bands who are out there uh, making a living um, and keeping their head above water, they're all touring. That's what they, how they make their money, is tour, 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 because they make the money on merchandise sales. A lot of them aren't even signed. And they're doing it on their own back, and that's that's what I think is important. I think it's important to get out and talk to people face to face. You remember people um, when you when you see them face to face, when you when you're personally introduced to somebody. Yeah, you remember them. It's not just it's just not a name on a screen. You know what I mean? Um, go back to try, we want to try and get more uh, like the CD on board or whatever else, so we can get that into people's hands with the lyrics and everything else, because. Going back to the tapes and the vinyl and all that kind of stuff, I always loved having something in my hand that I could see and read and find out what was going on with this band and what were the lyrics about. I don't get that on the internet, you know what I mean? And I want something physical in my hand and I think that's all part of the whole physical being there with somebody and experiencing the same same show. Um, it, it, it ties you to a time and place. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking to metalheads and rockers and all that kind of stuff. It's always reminiscent. You name a band, they'll be like, oh man, I seen those back in 96 at this thing. And I was like, oh yeah, I seen them on the same tour. You all remember where they were, or the t-shirt they bought there, you know what I mean? Yep. It wasn't, it wasn't, oh yeah, man, I came across them on www. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> that, that is so true. That is so true. So, and, yeah. I, I love, I just, I think, being out there in front of people is that's what I want to do. It's not new, but I think that's what the new band, like bands that are coming coming along now, forget. That's what it's all about. It's all about being in front of people. 
and the and the people being in front of the band. You know what I mean? That's, yeah, that's yeah, because they they make you and break you. Yeah, it keeps yeah. you real and it yeah. just keeps you feet on the ground. And that, that's the thing I I do miss, and, and that's where I'm going back to. Don't have the record stores no more. It was almost a place to also hang out too, in a sense. You met your friends there. You got the new CD of your favorite band or whatever, and you actually, like you said, you got to read the lyrics or. Or you know, just it, it was a possession that you held that was really nice. Yeah. And you know, with the iTunes and everything, you buy the one song you like, and the other six, seven, eight, or nine are forgotten about. Yeah. And everything. Exactly. So you really yeah. don't. You know, you buy that one song, and if you don't have that one song, I mean, you know. I know. It, it's yeah, it's pretty tough and everything like that. So. Salt balls. Yeah. It does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it does. But it is. You gotta keep moving with the. So, so, from the touring that you've done or shows that you've done, has there been a show that really stood out for you that you were like, "Man, that's gonna sit with me for a long time," in a good way? Uh, <laughs> well, most recent, definitely the House of Blues shows that we've been playing, um, with in conjunction with uh, Gig Boss GB. I met him a, a few years ago at a show in, in Fuller. And with the relationship we, 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 I, I kept with him, I was fortunate enough, he had faith enough in us as a band to put us on House of Blues shows and stuff like that. And I think our second last one, I was explaining, I was always, I remember looking out at the crowd and I just remember those lights going on and suddenly realizing the top tier was full of people as well looking down. And I always, I, that was just, the whole rock star the moment for me like yeah I'm 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 no rock star obviously and I'm just a, a simple guy like everybody else I haven't haven't proved myself yet I'm still trying to get my name out there but for me it was just like it was like that it was that really just cool moment that you yeah. work your ass off for and you just look up and you go wow that's cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so You're at cool. a nice venue and it's packed. Nice venue and it's packed and it's just people are enjoying the show and that's, yeah. that's pretty cool. Um, smaller, sh there's been one or two smaller shows. I remember uh, playing San Francisco. We played with an all-girl tribute band for uh, ACDC called ACDC. <laughs> I remember just one, it wasn't the greatest show. It was cool. It was like a 1,500-seater place. Uh, it wasn't full, but uh, definitely I think there were six, seven, eight hundred people there, which was cool. But they started throwing stuff at the stage, and I was, I was like, just kind of worried for a, a couple of seconds. I was like, oh, dang, these, I thought these people were liking this. Thing. I thought they were doing the reaction I was getting from them. I thought, like, oh, yeah. They started throwing stuff at us, and I was like, oh, oh what's going on? And I looked down at my feet, and there's just bags of weed. <laughs> <laughs> There's these little small sachets of weed, you know? and I was just like, okay, I guess I do like it. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of throwing flowers, they threw buds at you. Yeah, so <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, that was different. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, there's been one or House of Blues definitely, definitely a highlight to what I've done. Um, the Whiskey Go Go was pretty, pretty epic playing there for the first time. It was just like getting on stage. With, Knowing that that was some of the greats talking to yourself, uh, who lived uh, like went through all that uh, '80s sunset kind of stuff, yeah. I can only imagine. And that's all I could do, you know, was imagine standing on that stage, going, "Damn, this is this is where it happens," you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely, there's been some really cool moments. So. Yeah. Because when I compare it to, as I compare it to like sports, like say baseball, like when young players play for, at Yankee Stadium for the first time, they were standing on the same field as a Mickey Mantle or yeah. Babe Ruth and stuff. I mean, you guys are standing on the same stage as like Van Halen and Motley yeah. Crue. Yeah, it's the same thing started. about Rudy. Uh, the bass player was only telling me last week that um, at the House of Blues show, um, that when he was standing on the House of Blues stage, he was like, because he's a big, um, he's a big, uh, Punk supporter, you have to see you're wearing social media and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So he lo he's, he's crazy with all that kind of stuff and rancid and there he is. Like I said he was literally walking up the stairs because he remembers he remembers a documentary of like Rancid walking up the stairs after the show and he was imagining himself doing the same thing. He's like, yeah, this is where it happened. <laughs> and that's what I love about Rudy, man. He's, he's always like, you can see that fire and that that dream in his eyes, man. It was just like he understands where it all happens and he yeah. and he's there at that time. And we're, we're working towards that, you know what I mean? We're, yeah. we're, we're, we're trying to get to that position. Exactly. But 
we're, we're on that stage, it's a start, and then we just have to get bring it further. Yeah, just keep going. Hopefully that right yeah. person's in the crowd at that time. Yeah. yeah. All right, so now... Well, the it can either be that right person or that right 10,000 people, like, I mean... True. If that right person in the crowd, but, and there's 10,000 people liking this, that one person will fuck up. <laughs> so where were you four years ago, asshole? True. True. Um, now there's a flip side. There's a good and then there's a bad. Have you had any one of those most embarrassing spinal tap moments? <laughs> Man, it, it's, it's spinal tap moments all the time. That's why that movie strikes a chord with every musician in the <laughs> on the planet because it, that movie's so good. <laughs> <laughs> one of those spinal tap moments. Um, they happen all the time. Um, Try and pin out one is uh, is hard. You got me. You got me on that one, man. <laughs> so hard because there are been times where it's just everything relates back to that movie. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everything, no matter what. Um, no, you got me, man. <laughs> All right. There's there, there's always the. Uh, there's the thing with the girlfriends that have been in there and ever else are always like, ah, why do you have to practice tonight? And, uh, why do you have to play that show? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is it's, it's the weekend. Why are you why are you going like my, two hours out of town? It's my job. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's always if, if you're familiar with that movie at all, yeah, yeah. there's Final Tap mo- moments in every band and yeah. around. Um, damn. There's probably so many of them, I can tell you. You got me off guard. <laughs> Let me think. No, can't think of any. <laughs> Alright, we can save that for another time. Um, who would be your most... If you, had a, if you had a chance to work with somebody, whether it be one musician or a band, who would you really look forward to try to do something with? Whether it be a song or just like to work with? Uh... Band lighter or band or just a you know solo musician who who would you like be inspired to work with who would you love to uh, try to make a song with or I think um, I like to keep things like I'm a, I'm a bit of a, a realist and uh, I don't like to like dream, yeah so right now ideally for me I want to be. Uh, I want to support. I want to be on support with an up and coming band who who are playing in front of either like five, six hundred, a thousand, two thousand people. That's ideally where I want to be right now. That's the next step for Caven. Um, because I firmly believe um, that, that if I get the opportunity to play within that, to that many people, that uh, we can we can accelerate ourselves a hundred times quicker than what I'm doing right now because I think uh, um, it's not friends that are coming to see our shows it's actually people who are a fan of the music yeah we kind of touched on that earlier too uh, about yeah. that yeah and that's a testament I think to the songs that we're writing they're not just they're not just simple stupid bar songs whatever else a lot of our songs are very stadium orientated and I think that's why we shine on a bigger stage mm-hmm. um, we have we have so much fun in dive bars but I think the music that gets to breathe on a bigger stage. Oh yeah, um, and I think that's I think that's something we have that that puts us one one ahead of a lot of bands that are out there right now. We're not just we're not just trashing out songs for the sake of trashing out songs. We're actually we're trying to we write songs that are built for a bigger audience. You know, um, I don't know if that makes any sense at all. But no, it does. Yeah, ideally. I just want I want I want to get the opportunity to play in front of like built-in crowds, <laughs> so, with another band who worked their asses off and stuff like that, or doing and who are hungry for it. And obviously, yeah, they're at that level where I want to be at, and I just if I can get that opportunity to uh, be on that like that like the second stage of Book War, um, instead of when the Rock and Roll Gangster or Clothing Company who uh, sponsors a lot of that, mm-hmm. um, I've got to witness over all the states a lot. Um, the kind of crowds that come to that and see some of the bands and like I'm, I'm thinking to myself, yeah, I can do this. I can compete. I can. I can compete. I mean, I'm not just fantasizing about it or whatever else or, or delusion, delusion, deluding myself. But, um, I, I, I look at them with all seriousness 
Um, I listen to their songs and I give credit where it's due, absolutely. But I, I think wholeheartedly um, I can be up there competing with them. And I, I love that competition as well, you know what I mean? That's, that's what makes it fun. That, I, think, I think that's great to have because I think when people have that, and can turn it into a real good, friendly competition. Exactly. Sense. I think you bring out the best out of everybody, and exactly. then people walk away going, "Wow, that was an awesome show!" Precisely. Everybody was good. The energy everything. just is there. You know what yeah. I mean? And it increases. And I think it's, I think it's time that bands need to stop bickering between each other and fighting between each other. And if there's a better band, that band than you, like tip your hat to them. You know what I mean? They obviously they're either more talented than you, they either work their asses off harder than you. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? You gotta get credit where it's due. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think talent does go a ways, but I think it's just the hard work. I mean, you can have all the talent in the world, but if you can't mesh with your members, you know, you guys are off a beat or whatever. So it'll I, show. Like, it'll like come across. Like I said to you earlier, like I mean, I never, I'm nowhere near the best thing in the world. When I when I did Texas, when we toured Texas and um, San Antonio, I seen in the one bill, there was singers from 15 years of age to 40 years of age were just insane, absolutely insane singers. The pipes on them were just incredible. And I was just blown away. I was just like, damn, what I do to be able to sing like that? Like, oh. <laughs> but I give credit where it's due. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? But at the same time, I worked my ass off to be where I am, to do what I do. Um, and it's a testament to uh, the determination I have and the belief I have in myself. To never give up. I've been doing this so long, and I've been, I've been kicked in the teeth, and the guts, and the balls, and knocked on my ass so many times. And even when, even when I've been left there on my own, with no musicians or band around me, I still got my ass up off that ground, and I still picking, I'm still doing what I do. It's um, awesome. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's, it's like we said earlier. I, I came here not knowing a single person. Um, Playing the House of, House of Blues last week, one of many that we've done, and looking out into a crowd of a couple of hundred people, that's, I'm doing something right. I think I, I didn't come here following a dream. I came here um, to make some friends, and I think I, I'm doing a good job with so far. Right? Yeah, you are, man. Yeah. Yeah, you are. <laughs> I mean, like I said, uh, just everything that you guys have going for you, it seems like, as long as you can keep your band members <laughs> and everything, which is, it seems like it's a pretty, pretty pretty huge key to keep the ball rolling. Absolutely. And I think right now that the band is just the strongest it's ever been. It's 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 so tight. Um, uh, like, with the different band members that come in, there's obviously different influences, but I think right now it sits really well. And uh, it's, it's as strong as it's ever been. It's pretty cool. If somebody was brand new, trying to get going, you know, looking for advice, what would you give them? What would be some strong points that you would give some a new band out there, you know, to encourage them? Walk away now. <laughs> <laughs> Save yourself a lot of heartache. Walk away. Be a carpenter. <laughs> if you value money, absolutely, just get yourself a trade or a nice. A good job, college, something just. Uh, um, yeah, if, if it's an individual, that's exactly what I'd say. <laughs> if it's a band who are already got that bug and uh, that fire within them, I, I think decide if you're if decide whether you want to do it for fun and you're cool with that, uh, or decide if you actually this is what you want to do as a career um, and it's hard at that age to know what you want to do you know what I mean whether it's all you've got big plans and big dreams and stuff like that and it's hard to know whether you, you'll end up being a plumber or something like that. Yeah. Um, but it, I think it's key a key to enjoy yourself enjoy the music you know what I mean um, enjoy the shows you're playing but if you want to bring it to the next level you have to make sure that the other guys are on board too and too many times too many times I've heard that from past members um, that this is what we're gonna do and some absolutely lived up to lived up to it you know and um, it just got to a certain point where I couldn't hack it anymore and, and that seen a different path but in the early days uh, it's, it's that's something you gotta you gotta decide whether you want to just be in it for the love of music 
or you actually want to make this as a career. And if you want to make it as a career, you've got to work your ass off as as a band. You yeah. Know? And you you'll find that you'll save yourself many a heartache and many years of bloody bullshit. <laughs> um, if everybody's in it together, you know. Yeah. Um, that way, that way, if 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 it fails, you fail together. You know what I mean? If you strive and you, you start making strides, you do it together. You know what I mean? And uh, that's that'd be the cool thing about it. So it's it's something that, fortunately, I've spent a decade doing on my own. More so, I felt like I've I've been doing it on my own because uh, it's always I've been the key focus of the band. Yeah. And. Uh, had to make a lot of sacrifices for that. My family, my friends, were all back home. Um, I've sold everything I pretty much had just to be in LA. Um, so yeah, you got to be serious. You got to decide. Just decide. Is this what you want to do? And if you're serious, I make sure that the people around you are say, feel the same way. Um, ain't nothing wrong with just doing it for the love of it and having some fun. You know what I mean? There you go. That's what music's all about. It's it first and foremost is about having fun and and, and just playing music for the, That's for the love of it. The universal language of just doing it. And uh, but yeah, if, if if it's a career they want out of it, make sure everybody's on the same page. Yeah, you have to. Mm-hmm. You have because that's your that's your new family. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's it's three or four other girlfriends that you can't fuck. So. <laughs> uh, it gets stressful. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Well, you know what, Paul? I want to thank you for your time, man. It's been no a pleasure worries, and everything like that. And uh, appreciate well, it can bring me in and. Uh, Free lunch. There you go. There you go. Anytime, man. And, uh, like that. and second, uh, one of the most enjoyable uh, interviews I've had in here. So I appreciate it. Very cool. Thanks, man. Thanks. Like I said, I mean, thank you for your time and everything. And I look forward to seeing more, you know, stuff from you guys. And I wish I could be there tonight, man. I, I'd really love to see that. Well, yeah, it's a different, it's a different animal. I wouldn't, if 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 Caven is is. The dragon of music, or, or what we do, or the the the, the lion. Then um, the stuff I'm doing tonight, the Irish acoustic stuff, is probably uh, the kitty cat. <laughs> but you, <laughs> you know, know what? That's cool because I, I, I like a lot of different things and, and everything like that. And I've actually posted some like acoustic sets that people have done and everything. Yeah. And it's kind of a cool setting because you get to see another side of a person. And 